A PHP funding group will play the role of a couple who are trying to sell their home and are considering holding a note which Mr. Devorkin would broker to a funding source. Henry, let me introduce you to my clients that we talked about. This is James in Maryland. How are you do? I'm Henry. Let me it's set, nice to meet you, Henry. Let me set the stage for our meeting while we're all here together. Henry came to me and has explained to me about a process called creative financing that possibly could assist us in the situation that we have trying to sell your house. Your house has been on the market, as you know, for 18 months. We have a potential buyer that could not qualify for conventional financing, even though he does have $15,000 down because he's recently moved to the area and does not have a, a work history here. So what I've asked Henry to do is come and talk to us today and, and give us some information about his program. I've made him aware of some of your concerns, but I'd like for you to have the opportunity to do that at this time. So let's just talk about uh, the potential buyer that we have and some of your needs and concerns in regards to this proposed transaction. Okay, we're ready. We visited with the buyer, and the buyer has agreed that, as I said, he can pay $15,000 down and give you an $85,000 first mortgage note payable at the rate of $800 a month for just the principal and interest. We don't require escrow for taxes and insurance, and that's another reason the buyer is interested in, in our program. And the purpose of our meeting here today is to just to sort of frame a preliminary budget to see what you need from this sale. I know you want all the money, but, but let's talk about really what you need. So as, I, uh, as you are aware, if you had made the conventional sale, you would have had about $9,000 in closing costs and brokerage fees. That's still in the deal. And uh, then I understand you're buying a new house? Right. That's correct, yes. And how much do you need for the down payment? $14,000. It's a oh, bigger house. It's going to be a nice house. Good. Yes, it's a 10% down payment, so we're looking to kind of upgrade into a new home. Yes, I can understand that. And uh, do you know what the loan payoff on this house is? Did you check with the bank and talk yeah, to them? Yeah, it's $30,000. $30,000. Okay, $30,000. And then uh, anything else that you'd like to have? Uh, from well, the sale? Well, she had been talking about some remodeling money and walking around money, mm -hmm. so okay. we were looking at approximately $10,000. Another $10,000. Mm -hmm. Those have to are move. your minimum needs. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> that adds up to $63,000. And uh, what I'll try to do in the next day or so, and then we'll have another meeting, is put together a couple of scenarios that we can review in, in order to figure out how we can meet your needs. Henry, let me just interject before we uh, depart here today. Let me just interject. Their main concern is, and I really am not experienced with this enough to answer them, we need to ask you, what kind of risk is involved for, this, for, this potential, for these potential sellers in terms of this creative financing that you're talking about? Well, we can rank, work this deal two ways. One way is absolutely without any risk. You do, you do get your money, but you're going to have to give us a cash concession on how much money you get. The other way is we can get you full price for your house, possibly even a little bit more than full price, if you'll give us a time concession on some of the money, a large portion now and some at uh, a later date in about five years. Have you done this kind of creative financing you're calling it before, Dow? We've known you a long time, but of course we're just meeting Henry. No, we have not. Uh, Henry and I had our initial conversation only a couple of weeks ago. But seeing, uh, as the program was explained to me, and seeing the need that we have on occasion within our own office in terms of a buyer not being able to qualify for conventional financing, I felt like that his service that he's offering could meet a true needs of clients such as yourself. So I would like for us to explore this and at some point uh, get you comfortable with moving forward if that's the direction we need to go. Well, I think we're very interested in seeing the options. Well, it won't take me very long. Uh, so would Wednesday night be all right or would Thursday be better? Wednesday night is perfect at mm -hmm. 7 o'clock would be good for us. Okay, okay. Well, I'll be back at Wednesday night at 7. Thank okay. you very much. It's nice meeting you. Henry. Thanks for your Thanks. time. This scenario is a continuation of negotiations with note sellers for a simultaneous closing. Henry and Dow return to meet with Marilyn and James with details, facts, and figures necessary to complete the sale of their note. As we discussed last time, you had a, we had a budget of $63,000 in order for us to effect a sale of your house uh, temporarily. So what I've done is uh, I've reanalyzed the situation, and what I'd like to try to create is a note for $85,000 a 60-month note uh, at 10.8%. That'll have a balloon payment in it 
of approximately $82,200. Uh, if you get $63,000 now, uh, then, as I mentioned last time, you give us a time concession, uh, you'll get the other $37,000 down the road five years from now from the refinancing of the balloon. You know that credit is kind of like a muddy stream, and if this gentleman gets in here, pays his payments, which he has every intention of doing, those few glitches in his credit because of his lack of time in the area and his lack of jo uh, job seniority will disappear. We should have no trouble whatsoever in refinancing him through the conventional normal market uh, in five years, and at that point you'd receive the balance of the payment on your house of the other 37000 The immediate cash gives you the opportunity to move forward and buy the other house that you're in contract with and and uh, and dispose of this house and eliminate the payments here. But what happens if he doesn't make a payment? Because we, we're not gamblers. With that's our one money. of our that's one of our biggest concerns is having to wait that five year period, and then at the end of that five year period, is there a chance in between there that we could lose out? Yes. Well, there is a chance, but remember, if you've already received sixty three thousand and you only need thirty seven thousand more dollars to to uh, complete the, uh, the purchase of this house, and this gentleman and his wife should default, we certainly won't have a very difficult time selling this $100,000 house for, for seventy-five dollars or $80,000, and everybody will be able to still get the money that they're looking for. In, in, I will not tell you it's not risk-free. There is, of course, risk involved, but uh, you're really taking a risk now in the fact that your house is sitting on the market and you possibly will lose the really good deal that you've made on the other house. Henry, please, one of their concerns is the liability and how if foreclosure were to be of, uh, would be necessary from your end, explain that process and exactly how it would be handled and how it could possibly impact uh, my sellers here. All right, under the program, in the event, the worst case scenario, these people default, well, of course, our company or our, our funding source has a vested interest in the note, and they would, of course, have to do the foreclosure. But under the contract, you would be given an opportunity to repurchase the house, to protect your interest in your $37,000, uh, and uh, with some amortization and so forth on the existing loan, because we, if, we if we think the foreclosure is going to take place next week, let's not do the deal. But uh, uh, the value of the house would be very simple to get a new loan, a bridge loan as it's called from the bank, and uh, with this program in force and a reduction in the price, we should not have any difficulty remarketing the property in, in a very short time. You have an excellent broker here and he'll, he'll, he'll be able to do it. But we might have some inconvenience, but I doubt very much we're going to lose any money. There isn't any way we can just sell the house and, and be done with it? without having to be involved? Because that's part of our, our thought, too, is yeah. if we had all the money now, we may be able to invest the additional money and actually earn over the five-year period more than if it was just uh, sitting there waiting for us. All right. We can do that, but I can't promise you that you'll get $100,000 for the house if we do it that way. Well, how much is there money? some other I Would you take for cash a little less money? Well, we've been asking 100000 for a house, and we've always had a will accept price that we've been sitting on. So there is a cash price that we had always thought on that if anyone ever offered to us that we probably would accept. Okay. <clears throat> In that case, we, uh, we can use the same note. I think I could, uh, if I owned the total balloon, I believe I could fund this note for approximately $74,700. And that together with the $15,000 that that you're going to get from the down payment, because that's your money, it belongs to you, that would total just a little less than $90,000 for the property, and uh, you, of course, would have to pay your fees out of that, and you pay off your old loan, but all of the money that would result as if you had made a $90,000 sale would, uh, would be yours. And realistically speaking, isn't cutting the price from 100 to 90 possibly your next step anyway? That was what we were considering. Matter of fact, we were thinking of accepting 88,000 if somebody was to walk in the door and offer us a cash payout. All right, well, we can do a little bit better than 88,000, and we can probably get this deal done in a relatively short period of time. We'd have to go through much of the same steps 
uh, under our creative financing program. We need to check on the credit. We need to get the, the loan application and these sort of things. And then I will submit that to our funding source, who will, uh, but I'm fairly certain that the parameters which I've discussed with you are, are ones that they would be willing to participate in. And that way uh, you get your money, Dow makes his brokerage fee, it's, uh, the buyers get to move into this beautiful house that you're living in, and our company invests in mortgage notes, and, uh, and uh, we're pleased to do that. Let me, as your real estate agent, just recap these two options for your consideration, as I understand them, to be sure we'll, that we have it straight. One, option number one is that you could receive $60,000 now, okay. and in five years, you would participate to the extent of approximately $37,000 of a balloon payout. But you would have to stay involved, in, in a sense, and have that money at risk should something occur. The second option would be that the entire note that's created now, including the balloon, would be sold to Henry, and that would generate approximately $74,000 in cash. Is that the two options, as I understand? And with the second option, you have no additional risk or exposure or involvement in the note or the mortgage. The 74 plus the down payment? Yes. That is correct. The for, down payment needs a total scenario. of 89000 okay. actually $89,700, close to the 90000 that you had indicated last time we met that mm -hmm. you'd consider. And that's all, it, this would happen all at the same time? We wouldn't have to wait a while it, to get that money? That's correct. It's two separate transactions, but it's called a simultaneous closing. Uh, we would give you a commitment to provide the money at the table when you went to the title company or escrow company to close. And the process is that you would accept the $85,000 note, turn it over on the back, endorse it without recourse, that lets you out completely, and uh, in a sense sell that note uh, at the table for the $74,900. In addition, the buyer is putting the $15,000 down, and those two added up as your lump sum of cash for the sale of your house, out of which, of course, you'll have to pay off the old loan, pay Dow his fee, your title policy, and all the other expenses, but they're not any greater than they were before. That's sure. a good point. And you said it wouldn't take a long time. We have this other house that we will lose if we don't act quickly, so how I'm, long I'm is... I'm aware of the time uh, constriction in this transaction. Uh, it takes us about two to three weeks to, to get things uh, on the table and going, but since, uh, as we discussed, we're collaterally oriented, it will take us less time. It really depends on the appraiser. If he can get the appraisal out within a week or so, we can move forward very rapidly. Okay, what do you think? I think, I think yeah. I'd like to, to not be at risk. Yeah, option two is what we're leaning toward, where we can get the most out of it at this point in time so we have the money in our own hands to invest. So you'd like right. to say the entire note and the balloon? Uh, the that's entire, correct. Okay. I think that's a good decision. If we'd like we want to. to do, we'll just get right on that and see if we can't get that accomplished. We'd it. like to move forward and see if we can get the... Um, uh, ball rolling and get this deal closed as soon as possible. Well, I appreciate your confidence that you've expressed in me and in your broker, Dow. You've chosen an excellent broker, and I believe we, working together, we'll put it off for you. Thank okay? you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Henry, for your time. Converting a factoring prospect. Fred Steinberg of Express Business Funding plays the broker, and Peter Baranoff of Sun Capital appears as the business owner. Hi, Mr. Baranoff. Hi. How are you? Hi, how are you? Well, thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, as you know, my name is Fred Steinberg. I'm a cash flow specialist. I work with nearly 60 different income streams in the cash flow industry, uh, whereby I can help you acquire the funds necessary to help your company with the, any nature of a problem, whether it be tax or expansion, uh, pay bills, and uh, improve your credit rating. Sure. Uh, some of those income streams uh, can be uh, mortgage notes, viaticals, structured settlements, uh, real estate notes, and uh, accounts receivable funding. And uh, some of the national funding sources that I presently work with offer uh, credit lines of sorts, uh, using your receivables as collateral. And uh, there's probably some way that I might be able to achieve uh, the mission, which is to get some funding for your company. Uh, as soon as possible through this uh, various network that I am presently a part of. Well, that's definitely what we need, Fred. And I would really like to start this meeting uh, by asking you simply to tell me a little bit about your company and what you do, uh, what your mission is, what you intend to do with the funding, if we can get you the funding and qualify you for, uh, qualify you for the funding, and um, what your basic problems are, and 
hopefully we can maybe uh, solve some of the issues that are presently uh, uh, on the table right now. Sure. Well, I appreciate you coming down. The name of my company is Prestige Toys. I think Prestige you. Toys sells to toy retailers, toy stores <coughs> nationally. Mm -hmm. We sell um, children's toys, basically dolls. We import those toys. And our big season of the year is, is the holiday season. And we generally start shipping our goods in the months of August, September, October for the holiday season. Our terms are net 30, and we don't get paid for some time around 60 to 90 days. And that puts a cash drain on our company, and we have an opportunity to lower what our cost is of the toys if we can pay those bills sooner. So I'm hearing that uh, basically we have a seasonal cash flow problem that's inherent in the industry by the very nature of the business that you do. And I'm also hearing that uh, it's difficult to sustain slow paying clients. Uh, let me just ask you a few questions and I do have a uh, client profile that I brought with me that will help me to uh, make sure we can qualify you and have an understanding of what you do properly here. If you don't mind, I would just like to take a little bit of time and go through this with you. Go right ahead. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your annual gross sales or what your, uh, your gross sales are monthly. Our gross sales on a monthly basis are approximately 150000 per month. But in those big months, August, September, October, they can go as high as three to 400000 a month. Right. <clears throat> and of course, uh, as the, uh, the gross income grows, so does your problem uh, and increases your, your, the, the, uh, the ability to expand because you don't have the cash flow. Well, it's not only expansion. If I could pay my bills earlier, I'll get volume discounts, right. cash discounts, and generally that would improve my credit rating doing business with other suppliers. Sure, and certainly the vendors, when they're being paid in a timely fashion, uh, it makes for a much better uh, relationship between you and the vendors as well. Not only a better relationship, but it gives me good credit references to do business with other people. Right. Um, what are the average uh, or range of size of the invoices? The invoices range from a small of approximately two to five thousand to a high for some of the larger retailers of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars per month. Okay, and uh, a very important question is, uh, who are the debtors? Who pays you? Who are the customers that you're presently shipping to, and you're uh, giving invoices to for the goods? These are retailers who purchase toys. Many of them are chains. Mm -hmm. Some of them are are drugstores that have toy departments, mm -hmm. and they're selling our merchandise throughout the year, but with the majority in the holiday period. Right. And I think in looking at the, the amount of the annual gross sales that you're presently doing and listening to what the situation is, one of the uh, methods of funding that I would probably recommend to you at this time would be accounts receivable funding or factoring. And uh, I'm saying that because of the annual gross sales, and I'm saying that because I'm listening to what you're saying and hearing what the problems are, and it would probably be one of the most expedient methods of uh, getting you some, uh, helping you acquire some funding. Is, um, is there a need for the, for the money right now? Is this an immediate need? Well, I wouldn't have asked you to come in so soon if I couldn't use the funds. Well, there are p sometimes we'll sit down you know, for some educational meetings for clients who, uh, who are seasonal, and the season has not yet uh, come and they want to know for the future and sometimes we can work like that but if you need the funds now then uh, absolutely accounts receivable funding would, would be the solution and the reason that I'm saying that is because it is a method that will pre is predicated on the strength of the customers you're presently shipping to and we will not have to spend a whole lot of time with tax returns and uh, compi compiled audits and a lot of paperwork that will slow things down. We can get you a, a much faster approval uh, if we go this route and predicate the creditworthiness on those customers and take the creditworthiness off of your shoulders. So how does it work? Well, the process is very simple. You'll basically be submitting your invoices uh, that you wish to receive funding on to the factor, who will at that point in time give you what's known as the advance, which is a percentile of the invoice. And that percentile can range anywhere from 60 to 90 percent, hmm. uh, which will depend on the funding source that will accept this proposal and the funding source that I decide to work with when I go back and do some research and investigation as to who would best be fitting you uh, based on your industry, the size of your company, and uh, the expediency. And you receive that advance. It's yours to do with what you want. 
There are no restrictions on it, as there is with some other funding. Uh, you can go ahead and achieve your cash discounts, your volume discounts, uh, increase your credit rating. The check is then paid to the funding source. The money received from the uh, customer is then sent to the funding source, who will, at that point in time, deduct a fee and return the remainder known as the reserve. And thereby, you will have received a large percentile of your face value, and you would have paid what's called a discount to the funding source. So it's not a loan, and there is no interest rate, and uh, you, it's a much more practical method. Once a transaction is accomplished, uh, you can move on to your next transaction. It's a very uh, unrestrictive method of achieving expedient funding. When <coughs> could I have an answer from a funding source as to if they would accept my type of business? Well, the best thing to do is to uh, help me fill out this application, which takes about five minutes, and it's basically a very generic information on you, uh, like your name, phone number, address, a federal ID number, and some other basic information. I'd like to see an aging report of your present customers and your receivables. I happen to have that available for you. Okay. If you don't mind, I'd like to take a look at that. And uh, it will help us if I'm able to submit this to the funding sources to look at because basically they're going to see that most of your customers are paying in a reasonable period of time. Certainly they don't expect your customers to be paying COD or you, I wouldn't be sitting here. But it must be within a reasonable period of time. 60 to 90 days does meet the criteria, so I don't see a problem there. It lets us know how many different customers you have because many of the funding sources don't like to accept a single debtor. It becomes a little too risky. Sure, I understand that. And how you're presently billing and collecting your money to make sure that there are systems in place and that you're on top of that situation. And I'll submit this to some funding sources. And in the next day or so, I'll call you and uh, we will either have a conference call with the funding source or I'll be glad to come back in person with some closing documents and present the proposal to you. And if you accept it at that time, I think we can get funding in anything from 5 to 12 working days. All right. Well, why don't you take the information? Let's see what your funding source has to say, and let's talk again. It would be my pleasure, and uh, thank you very much for having me today, and I look forward to doing some business with you. Sure. Thank nice you. to meet you, Fred. And this scenario is the continuation of converting a factoring prospect. After gathering and evaluating the appropriate information, Fred has returned to meet with Peter to present the proposed deal. Hi, Peter. Thanks for having me back again. I have here the uh, proposal from the funding source uh, for you to take a look at. Sure. And I would, uh, if everything is uh, okay with you, we can go ahead and have you sign this off, execute this now, and get it back to the funding source so that we can get you funded as soon as possible. Uh, certainly, if you'd like a little bit of time to look it over, that's okay. I uh, don't want to put any undue pressure on you, but certainly you understand that uh, the countdown to get you funded really begins once the funding source has this executed and back in his possession so he can begin his due diligence. Certainly. Why don't you take <coughs> me through it? Okay. Well, basically what this is is the um, purchase and sale agreement, uh, which will stipulate the advance rate, which the funding source has decided this time would be 70 percent. Uh, there's a fee schedule included, which shows that at this time, the funding source is going to give you a discount uh, schedule of four discount points for the first 30 days and 1.5 discount points every 10 days thereafter uh, for up to 75 days. <coughs> and it also stipulates what you can and you can't do. There are some agreements uh, and some attachments that stipulate you cannot deposit the check into your own account, uh, you cannot interfere with the payment of the check, and some other legal things that you should uh, probably read over, uh, which we can do together if you like, paragraph by paragraph. Make sure you understand this completely. And um, certainly it's uh, contracts like this, as in all types of funding, are for the protection of the funding source and uh, critically uh, to prevent things like uh, fraud. And so therefore, uh, we have to have this document executed. I understand that, Fred. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Will your funding source accept all my customers? Well, the funding source will accept any of those customers which they deem credit worthy, meaning that uh, certainly Dun & Bradstreet's or other credit bureaus will be contacted uh, to do a credit report on those customers to make sure that they do carry the burden of credit worthiness. Now, you do remember that I told you at the, uh, when we first started this, at the inception of this transaction, that the transaction would be predicated on the credit worthiness of your customers and the credit worthiness would be taken off of your shoulders. So certainly, if you were to present a customer who was not credit worthy, 
Uh, then, of course, on the entire balance or the equation here, we don't have any creditworthiness because we have not done any credit checking on you. And you should not be concerned that your customer will see these uh, credit checks coming from you as, the, as it sometimes happens in consumer credit. Uh, these type of credit checks for corporations are a matter of public record. They're on the internet. And when, the company, when we do do these credit checks, your customers are not aware that the credit checks are being done. And so therefore, you will not, of course, make anybody angry. What will my customers think, Fred, of <coughs> the fact that I'll be doing factoring or accounts receivable funding? Well, you know, receiving any funding in today's society is a statement of strength. Uh, certainly, uh, everybody knows that nobody is receiving funding uh, that's on their way out or in trouble, and there are no funding sources who would give a company that's in trouble any sort of funding at all. And I think that if I told you that your competitor has just received a very large line of credit, uh, you would probably become envious uh, as your first emotion, thinking if I had that, what I could do would be to pay my invoices on time and receive some of those discounts that you mentioned earlier and sustain the seasonality of my business. And if uh, your customers know that you have received a line of credit, I think you're making a statement of strength. You're saying to the customer that you now have the wherewithal to supply them with the goods, uh, that you can continue to service them the way that you've serviced them in the past, and uh, that, it's, that you are a substantive company uh, who will be around a while. I, I understand that, Fred. But will your funding source be constantly calling my customers for payments? Actually, there's very, uh, the funding sources have some contact, but it's uh, mostly to verify uh, that the in amount of the invoice is true and correct. Once again, we're watching to make sure that, we're not, that the funding source is not purchasing a $40,000 invoice, and that's really a $4,000 invoice, and that the goods have been delivered in good standing, that the goods have been received, and that the payment will be due. And certainly, what you're giving to the funding source is uh, a something of value, and what the asset or what that something of value happens to be is the debt of your customer, who then in turn pay your funding, pay the funding source. So certainly they will have to have some contact. Uh, it might be just a short one-time phone call or a fax that uh, an authorized person at your customer's office will sign off, saying yes, this is the amount, this is what you do, and then the funding source can go ahead and fund you. I understand. <clears throat> what you first mentioned an interest rate? Well, no, this is not an interest rate. This is not a loan. Uh, this is simply a purchase by the funding source uh, for a discount fee, which is something different. And what was that fee? That fee is four discount points every 30 days. Wow, that's high. That's 48% a year. Well, let's address 48% a year. Uh, you mentioned that you would do approximately 100 to 150,000 a month. That's correct. And you would have a fee if it was $100,000 a month of $4,000 that month. Now, I would presume that you might come back a second month with a brand new $100,000. And once again, you would have another $4,000 fee. Well, you can see that if we do this over 12 months, you probably will do something like 100,000 12 times, which is 1.2 million. And you'll have a fee of 4,000 each month for 12 months, which is 48,000. And 48,000 remains 4% of 1.2 million. And the reason for that is we have a transaction that is every 30 or 60 days as its entire transaction. And it is not an annualized 12-month transaction or interest rate. Hmm. And when we talk about something being expensive, remember now uh, how expensive is not being able to have your discounts, how expensive is a bad credit rating and your ability to continue doing business, how expensive is a cash flow problem and not being able to sustain seasonality or walking away from larger orders that you can't possibly fulfill because of a problem with your cash flow, what would it cost you to walk away from just one order or two orders hmm. or three orders? Well, it seems high to me. I, you know, I have been talking to other people. And some of those other people, you know, perhaps can give me a better rate. If we're talking about other funding sources, uh, you know, doing uh, the same thing that our funding sources, certainly uh, we can uh, examine this by uh, going back to some of the funding sources and maybe come back with another proposal. Uh, but if we're talking about loans, we're pres w the presumption is uh, that you needed uh, some funding immediately and that uh, you wanted something expedient. And if we go back to those traditional lending sources, uh, of course, we're going we're to be talking a certain amount of time. It may go right past your season. Uh, you may not be able to deliver the goods by the specified time that you have your orders. You may not be able to take advantage of your discounts. And once again, how competitive will that be once we add those things into the, to the formula here versus the, the, the four-point uh, discount fee that I've, I've offered you?
I hear you, Fred, but this sounds way too easy for me. I mean, compared to a bank, it's it just, I'm skeptical. Well, the beauty of it is that it is easy. And if you uh, remember now, I worked with uh, many different income streams. And in listening to what your situation was, one of the demands uh, that you placed on me uh, to help perform for you was the fact that you need something quickly, uh, was the fact that uh, you had some spe specific problems that you wanted me to deal with, and that's what I've accomplished through this method of funding. Now, the reason that it sounds too good to be true is previously companies your size were not exposed to this method of funding. This is something that was traditionally in the Fortune 500, Fortune 1000 companies, and the institutional factors that came together from many, many small factors in the 1950s and 1960s placed greater demands on the clients. They would want uh, term contracts for longer terms. They would want you to guarantee monthly minimums, which you may not be prepared to do. And they would want you to fund at least a million dollars a month or more. And that's why companies like DuPont may have used this, or Shell Oil Company, or Georgia Pacific, or Honeywell, and companies your size just were not exposed to this. But don't be concerned, Peter. This was around since the early 1900s, and uh, this is a, a very old formula used by, uh, by very large corporations to uh, attract funding. You know, I'm not a large corporation, and it sounds that they're going to do this for me, this funding source. There's got to be hidden costs you're not telling me about. Well, actually, there are no hidden costs. There may be some associated fees. Uh, if you want an overnight wire, the funding source may have a, a, a specific fee for that. Uh, if you want an overnight check, there may be a small fee for that. And certainly, if uh, we're going to uh, do some credit checks as you bring in some new and larger customers, of course, the burden it will be on you uh, when you're selling something to somebody to produce proof, or the, you know, the burden of proof would be on you that the creditworthiness is there. And those are typically anywhere from 35 to 50 or 60 dollars. But those are small associated fees. And they really only crop up or appear when you request those things. Certainly, mm. you can have regular mail, in which case you would have no fees. But this discount fee is the only fee. And unlike traditional banking sources, there are no hidden fees or account maintenance fees or initiation fees, loan origination fees, document preparation fees. You've seen all that with the traditional lenders. Sure have. Well, how do I know that your funding source, Fred, can meet my needs as, as they grow? I mean, how, do they have the money? How do I know? Well. Traditionally, the uh, lending sources uh, are substantial. There are about four or 500 uh, funding sources just like this across the country. Uh, many of them are the large, about 80% of them are the large institutional funders, and the remaining 20% are the mid-size and entry-level funding sources. And typically what we do when a client like yourself asks this question is to have the funding source fax right into you directly his references, where you can call other clients, possibly in the same industry, possibly the same size as you, uh, doing business with the funding source over a long period of time uh, and growing so you can see that he was able to go ahead and uh, be able to handle that growth and sometimes bank references if that's what you'd prefer to talk to their bankers. I'm, so, I'm sure they won't tell you what's in their bank account but they will let you know that they are substantive and able to handle uh, any of the uh, different amounts that you plan to do as an increase. Sure, I, I, that <coughs> sounds good because I'd appreciate a reference list. Okay. Um, I'd like you to keep in mind though, Peter, that I'm not really here to sell anything to you or convince you who our funding sources are and we are, I'm here to solve a problem. And at this point in time, you have a cash flow problem that I can bring a service to you as opposed to sell you anything. Uh, I'm a problem solver. I'm not a salesman. And here is the solution to the problem, and it's on the table. This is the best offer that I'm going to be able to get for you right now. The faster we execute this and get this done, the faster you have your funding. And how long is fast? Uh, I can have an account open anywhere from 5 to 12 working days for your first funding. And once the account is open, typically within 24 to 48 hours, depending on the funding source. This particular funding source within 24 hours. Well, that sounds pretty good to me. Let's talk more about it and let's get started. You bet. Thanks, Fred. Thank you very much. Converting a note prospect into a note seller. D. Jones of D. D. Jones Funding plays the broker. And Choice Edwards, a member advisor with the American Cash Flow Institute, is the seller. Welcome, Dee. Nice to meet you, Choice. Thanks for having me come to your home. Well, you have a to have lovely you. home Thank here. you very much. Can I offer you a cup of coffee? I don't think so, thank you. I just had lunch. Okay. And I'm up to here with coffee, to be <laughs> honest with you. Thanks so much. But, sure. Um, I'm so glad that you said that it was okay for me to come here, because I think sometimes it's much better when you can see who you're doing business with. It makes the whole 
transaction a whole lot easier. Good. I appreciate you coming here. Well, I appreciate you having me here. <laughs> I really want to get started on this and find out exactly what it is you're looking for and tell you a little bit about me. I've, I'm fairly new in the business, as a matter of fact. I don't know whether you know very much about our business. Nothing. Nothing. Well, how did you find out about me? Where did you get the information on me? Well, actually, I just happened to see this advertisement in the Penny Saver and said you bought uh -huh mortgage notes and I, I didn't know that anybody bought those and so I thought I'd call because I, I just to see what the business is about and mm -hmm. uh, I can use some I can use some money right now very good do you know that was my first ad really and yes and I am so pleased that you saw it yeah. in there thank you so much so well let's get on to the business of your note okay. I know that when we spoke on the phone you said that you were in need of some some cash yes. pretty quickly I understand mm -hmm. that was my that was my understanding then I'm going to ask you some questions and it's mostly going to be concerning the note itself and the property, too. Okay. So I'm just going to go down this uh, worksheet that I have because since I'm fairly new, this helps me, it accuse me and tells me ah. which questions I need oh. to ask and the information I oh, need. Okay. So that when I take it to my funding source, I should have all of the information for him. Okay? Um, could I ask you when you sold the property? Yes, uh, we sold it in, in January. In January of this, this year? year? January of 98. Yes. Okay, very good. And the selling price? It was uh, 200000 $200,000. Must have been a very nice house. Well, it was a pretty nice house. Mm -hmm. you know, we we enjoyed it, and uh, it, I, I, I like it. Did you sell it to somebody you knew? Or? Yeah, actually, I sold it to my daughter and my son in law. Oh, very good. So. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Did they give you a down payment? No. As I mentioned, it was my daughter and son-in-law, and mm. you know they're, mm -hmm. they haven't been married very long, and they didn't have any cash, and no so no down payment at all. So no. you wrote you you're carrying back the note for the entire amount. Yeah, I, I just felt like uh, to help the kids out a little bit, and so yeah, that's what we did. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, is this the first lien, or is there an underlying balance involved in this as well? Do you owe money on the house? Well, that's one reason I need some money. Uh, yeah, there's an $80,000 balance on the previous mark, so I, and I need to pay that. As a matter of fact, when I, when I did this transaction with my daughter, I didn't realize the bank wanted me to pay that off. I didn't realize oh, it at the time. Oh, dear. What kind of time limit are we talking about for that payoff? Well, they gave me a notice last month, actually, and I really haven't done a whole lot about it. I didn't know what to do. And then I saw your ad, and uh, I don't know what you do, but I thought I'd give you a call and see if you can okay. help me out of this well, I, I think we might problem. be able to help you with this in, in some way. What I'd like to do is finish gathering the information, and then I'd like to talk to my funding source. Okay. And what they give us, of course, is going to depend on the information that you give to me. So the date of the note then was January? That's when January you sold it. this year, yes. Okay. And the amount then was 200000 Okay. Mm -hmm. What kind of terms did you write it for? How many months? How many years? It was 30-year term. 30 years? Uh, and 8% uh, eight, eight interest. 8% eight interest. Yeah, it's, you know, I, again, I'm trying to give, them a, give the kids a break. Right, I understand. And how much do they pay you each month? About 1500 a month. About 1500 Yes. Okay. Is, was there a balloon built into this, or was, was it straight amortization? No, you know, uh, we haven't done this very often, and it's, it's the first time we've done it, and mm -hmm. I just really wanted to get some money, help mm -hmm. the kids mm -hmm. out, and so there's no balloon. I just gave it for right. 30, 30 years, and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I figure they're probably, in a few years, satisfy it anyway, buy another house, and so I really sure. wasn't concerned about it. Sure. What kind of documents did you do? Did you do a deed of trust or um, Yeah, I think that's what you call it. Or? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think okay. it was a, a deed of trust we did. You think and it was a, a deed and, of and trust? And a note that they signed. Okay. Now, on your, on your previous balance, have you been making those payments regularly? And, and do you know what the terms are on that one? Uh, yes, uh, I've been paying that. It's about 1100 a month. About 1100 mm -hmm. a month. That doesn't leave much in there does there no. if you're collecting 1500 and you're paying out 1100 hmm okay now let me ask you about your daughter and your son-in-law um, I know that they're related to you and I don't mean to offend you by asking these questions but I must ask them anyway okay. have they made their payments yeah. regularly every month first couple of months they were right right on time but uh, frankly the the last two or three months it's been a little slow and you know I 
a little concerned about it, but not overly. Uh, I, they, they're good kids, and they, they pay. Have they made all of the payments? They've made all the payments, but they've, they've been a little they've slow little the last late. couple of months, yes. Okay, do they have any, any credit problems of any kind do, that you know of? Not that I'm aware. Uh, okay. But you know how kids are I these understand. days. I understand, yes. Um, yes, Not I that understand. I'm aware. Okay, I think that I have most of the information that I will need for the funding source on the, the note itself. Now let's get to the house itself. This is, I'm assuming it's a single family residence. It is. And since yeah. they're living in it, that it would be owner occupied, of course. Yes. And um, you have the street address on that? Uh, yes, it's uh, 1450 Keep Away Drive. Keep Away. And that, is that in the city here? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, and they are living in it. Oh, yes. So, okay, fine. Which county is this? Because I'm, as you know, I'm, I'm from uh, another city. And yeah, that, that house is in uh, Seminole County. Seminole, okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Give me a little bit of uh, description on the house itself, if you would. The size, the number of bedrooms, and that sort of thing. That's what I'm looking for. The, it's, um, as I recall, it's about 2,900 square feet. Okay. It's uh, four bedrooms, three mm -hmm. baths, and it's one story slab. Okay. Does it have uh, central air and heat? Yes, it has a heat pump. Okay. And stucco. Okay. You think it's in fairly good condition? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you think that it would appraise for what you sold it? Well, it's, it's interesting you ask that because I, I know that recently uh, I received a postcard because some property sold in the area. And, yeah, it, they sold between 230 and 240,000 right? in, those, the, in those the area. Those were the comps in the area. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, just that's very interesting, yes. It's amazing how these realtors are, are today. They'll send you a postcard and want to know if you want to sell. Absolutely, I understand that. I understand that. The way we will normally do this is um, we will ask for copies of your documents. Do you know where your documents are? Jeez. You know, I think, I think they're in a safe deposit box. Uh, down okay. at the bank, okay. I'm, okay. I'm pretty sure. In the event that we do need them, uh, do, could you get them and gather them all together? Oh, sure. and, and I'm thinking of all of the documents that were involved in the sale of this property. There okay. should be a closing statement in there, and that closing statement will mm -hmm. tell us the sale price and the down payment. In this case, I know there is no down payment, but it will give us all of the details of the sale as far as the monetary conditions were. Okay. Yeah, a friend of mine, uh, well, actually a relative, uh, who's an attorney, just drew up the documents. I'm pretty sure they're Okay, safe and, and you've box. had some of them recorded at the courthouse, the deed of trust possibly? I and guess that's what he did, okay. yeah, I think did, so. Did, did you create a new title when you did this? Jeez, now that I don't really okay. remember. But you have a title from when you owned it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You do have, mm -hmm. okay. Those are some of the documents we will need. We'll just need okay. copies of them. So okay. that after I've spoken to my funding source to see what we can do for you, I will call you back and possibly come back and visit with you and gather up copies of those documents and we can take it from there. And I'll tell you what the funding source will tell to me. You say funding source, I mean, is that going to be like a local bank here? Well, the, the funding source is the person with the money and sometimes it could be a, a private investor, but in this case, it's an institutional buyer. It is somebody who works in this industry, and they specifically buy real estate notes. Oh. And the reason I work with this particular funding source is that they always try to do the very best for our, for our clients and the people that we talk to. So they make us look good in the industry. Oh, and great. at the same time, they help the people that we're working with. By the way, you know, I, that 80000 that, that I have to pay off, that's not all I, I really need. I was going to get back to that because I know you said that you were in a little bit of a hurry for that. Do you know what the time frame is on that particular note, that, the underlying balance? Well, the bank gave me notice, uh, as, as I mentioned, last month, and they're, they're getting a little impatient. I, I think probably no later than the end of this month, they, uh, <laughs> they're looking for You're their looking money. You're looking at three to four weeks, possibly? Yes. That quickly. Okay. Well, we'll see what we can do. And then you mentioned some other instances that you might use the money or mm -hmm. need money. Yes, I'm thinking of a, a, a new business venture, and I'm going to need about $30,000 for that. And then I also um, 
I have a little problem with the Internal Revenue Service. I owe them about ten. About ten thousand dollars. So we're looking at a total of approximately one hundred and twenty thousand dollars that you will need right now. Yeah, Is that at correct? Least, yes. Is that correct? Hmm. Okay. Well. Let me speak to my funding source. I'll give them all this information, and I should have an answer for you, hopefully by tomorrow morning. You don't think it would be a problem, do you? Well, no. Normally, now, you are aware of the fact that you will not be getting dollar for dollar on the balance if we buy this note. And, and I want to make that perfectly clear before I leave here, because sometimes I've, I've spoken to people, and if they have sort of, say, an $80,000 balance, they think they're going to get $80,000. And mm. our funding sources are investors. And so there, it will not be a dollar for mm. dollar. But we'll get you the very best we can. I mean, will it be, I mean, be close? Well, I, I hate to give you numbers right now, and I really don't want to do that, mm. simply because I might give you a number that is, is just not going to be correct. And I'm, I'm new enough in this business that I don't even dare guess at what will come back. And a lot of it will be depend on the due diligence. Due diligence? I'm sorry, yes. Due diligence is where they're very similar to the banks at some point, but we don't do the extensive due diligence, in other words, the investigating into the background of the note of the people involved in it, as the banks would. Okay. The funding source will do an appraisal, and normally it's a drive-by appraisal. And by that we mean they will drive by the property and take pictures, and then they'll pull up comps and that sort of thing. They will also check the credit on the buyers of the property. And that's a very important factor, and that could influence it one way or the other. They also like to see the title policy to make sure there are no other liens or judgments and that sort of thing against the title policy. And then the review of all the documents. Since the documents were drawn up by an attorney, they are probably okay, but they still would like to review them to make sure that they really are okay. okay. Because sure. once in a while, somebody will put something into a document that prevents us from buying the note. And we just want to make sure there are no complications yeah, there. This is just my daughter and myself, so I'm, I right. think everything's mm -hmm. probably in order. Okay, very good, very good. Well, I think I have everything that I need, Choice. And so my next job now is to call my funding source and convince him that we need to do the very best we can for you. I need that money. So. And do it as quickly as possible. Yeah. You think you can come pretty close, though, because I, I mean, I need that 120000 I really do. We I'm, will certainly give it a try, honestly. Okay. We'll, we'll really try to do that for you. And if not, we'll come up, we'll try to come up with some options for you. Okay. I always like to present an option of some type so that you can do what you have to do. And I really appreciate your asking me to do this. So I will call you just as soon as I finish speaking with my funding source and I get some kind of an offer from him, okay? okay great. Thank you so much, and I will, I'll you. talk to you soon. Okay, Thanks. thank you, Dee. Here's the scenario for the continuation of converting a note prospect into a note seller. Dee returns to meet with Choice to present the options to sell his note. Welcome back, Dee. Thanks, Joyce. Good to see you again. It's I think I've got some good news for you oh, today. Great. Yes, and I can I was, use some good news. Well, I know you can. I know you can. Let me give you the bad news first. Is that okay? <laughs> we'll save the good news for last. Actually, it's not really bad news. It's okay. just some facts that I just need to uh, to give to you uh, concerning your note. We went back, and I did fax my worksheet to the funding source, and he came back with two offers. And one of them I think you're going to like very much. Okay. I like to give you two offers to give you a choice and to show you the difference between the two of them. We like to come back with a full purchase. That means we will buy the full note and give you cash for it. And then you just walk away from it. And we collect okay. payments from that point on. The other one is a partial, but it has a little different twist to it. And I think you're going to like that one. Okay. So, Bad news first. The bad news first. Well, the bad news first is that you still have a current balance on that. Even though you sold the house for $200,000, you created a note for $200,000, the balance is still $199,041. And that's 1% equity in that property. So that sort of hurts a little bit. Okay? Yeah, I realize that. Yeah, I do. Yes. And we found uh, through calculating that the monthly payment is actually $1,467.53. So you were pretty close when you said it was around $1,500. Mm -hmm. So that's just for your information. The, the offers that the funding source gave to me, 
are, uh, let me loan you a piece of paper. Do you have a pen? I'd like for you to write these down. I do, yes, okay. So that you can remember them, if you would, please. <clears throat> the full purchase of that balance of 199000 the remaining payments, we would be buying all of the remaining payments. There were 360 payments. You've collected eight, so that leaves 352 payments that we would be buying. They will pay $145,000 cash. Wow, that's just... I know that that's doesn't, doesn't seem like a lot, wow. so that's why I think you'll like the partial a whole lot better. And I love giving the partials to the people that I speak to, to my sellers, because they always do like the partials a lot better. <laughs> and remember I told you, this, <laughs> this funding source is so good, they always try to do the best they can for the sellers, because they know the situation you, you're in, and, okay. and I've explained it all to them. We're going to do something called a partial purchase, and that means that we're going to buy a stream of payments. We'll buy 240 payments, but in addition to that, we're not going to buy the entire payment. What we're going to do is leave you with an income stream every month, as well as giving you the cash that you need. You're going to give me some cash, and I'm still going to have some, an income stream? Yes. Doesn't that sound great? I told you we saved the good news for last. Wow, I, this okay. I have to hear. Okay, the way it works is we buy a part of that monthly payment. You keep the other part of it. Plus, we give you cash up front, the cash that you need, by the way, $120,000 wow. in cash at the closing of when we, when we transfer all of these documents to the funding source. $120,000 you are going to give me? Yes. And I'm still going to have and you still Some collect. The... Let me give you the, the exact figures. Okay. We'll buy 240 payments. Now this is not the remainder of the note. Keep that in mind. There are still yes. payments left. 240 payments and of the payment amount which is $1,467, we are going to buy $1,217.63. Wow. 